What's up, everybody? So today I am doing the top 20 baseball cards of all time. Uh, basically, this is a response to Ray from Philly. If you guys are not familiar with his YouTube channel, I'll put a link below. But basically, uh, last year he asked, what are your top 10 baseball cards of all time? Asked and, uh, about 40 different YouTubers, and uh, he aggregated all those results. So I'm going to start with... The top 10, the cards that were voted in last year, number 10 through number 1. Then what I'm going to do is for the number 20 through number 11, I'm going to give you my nominees uh, for the 2019 Baseball Card YouTube Hall of Fame. So starting off at number 10. So again, I'll start off with number 10 then through number 1. Then I'll do number 20 through number 11. At number 10, and again, this was voted on uh, last year, was... The 1951 Bowman Mickey Mantle, <laughs> absolutely I iconic card, uh, and every reason to be uh, number 10 on the list, the Mickey Mantle rookie card. Uh, at number 9, and maybe a little bit of a surprise to some people, would be the 1980 Tops Ricky Henderson, finished at number 9 last year. Um, and if you think about it, it does make some sense. I mean, Ricky Henderson, greatest leadoff hitter of all time, greatest stolen base guy of all time, and who doesn't love... The 80 tops design along, and then on top of that, this awesome Oakland Athletics jersey that Ricky Henderson is rocking there. So that's at number nine. At number eight uh, is a card that I don't necessarily agree with that is in, should be in the top ten. It's the 1948 Leaf Jackie Robinson. I'm just not a big fan of this particular card, but I totally understand, you know, Jackie Robinson um, finishing in the top ten. What I prefer personally is the 1949 Bowman Jackie Robinson, which I do have. Um, at number seven uh, was the 1968 Topps Nolan Ryan Kuzman card, just one of the, mo the most iconic cards of all time. I don't happen to have this card, but it is definitely uh, one of the most iconic cards in the, in the hobby. Uh, at number six was the 1933 Gaudi Babe Ruth. There are four cards in the the Gaudi set, uh, but number 144 was the one that was voted on. I happen to agree; it's my favorite Gaudi card, um, and mainly because it's just this iconic uh, image of Babe Ruth swinging a bat, and also in the Yankee pinstripes. Uh, at number five uh, was the 1951 Bowman Willie Mays. Uh, hard to argue with this card; uh, just an awesome card of. The, the uh, Say Hey Kid. At number four uh, was the 1954 Topps Hank Aaron. Um, this is my, my version of that card in a PSA 4. Just a really awesome card. Uh, at number three was uh, the Ken Griffey Jr. 1989 Upper Deck. Uh, I have this card in a PSA 10. I have to get this re-slabbed because it's got this dent here. Probably do that in Chicago. But obviously... Uh, the uh, the most popular card of the, the 1980s, the uh, Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card. At number two, uh, this is obviously not <laughs> a uh, the real deal, but the uh, the Honus Wagner was voted in as number two, the T206 Honus Wagner. Uh, you know what? I'm going to show you guys. I actually saw this card in person at the Atlantic City National, so let's roll that clip. Hi, right, Joe. Oh, it's a Honus Wagner. Excuse me. Oh my god, I was saying, why it's only a five? It's a harness wagon. <laughs> there it is. <coughs> What's it? <coughs> Can you see the back? Nice. So there you have it, guys. That's video of me at the Atlantic City National a couple years ago, seeing the Honus Wagner in person. Uh, but that may be the most valuable card, but the card that was voted to be the greatest card in our hobby uh, was the 1952 Tops Mickey Mantle at number one. Uh, whether you want to vote for the Wagner or the, Wa or the Mantle at number one, I have no problem with, but the 52 Tops Mantle, just such a beautiful card, um, and it's got, you know, so much allure behind it. It's part of that inaugural 1952 Tops set, so that was voted at number one. Uh, so next I'm going to do my nominations uh, for this year, and I'm going to start at number 20, which is, <laughs> I had to put this in here, is the, uh, the 1989 Fleer Bill Ripken FF Error. 
And there you can see it at the bottom of the, the, the bat. To me, it's the greatest error card of all time. And uh, for me, got to fit it in that uh, in the top 20. Uh, at number 19, uh, this is sort of like one of those cards. It's, it's from 1888, and I voted for it last year. Um, I'm just such a huge fan of the Goodwin Champions 1888 cards. Whether you want to vote for the King Kelly or the Cap Anson, I just can't believe that these cards exist from 1888. So had to get that in there at number 19. At number 18, uh, and again, another nominee for me, is the 1956 Tops Mickey Mantle. Uh, for me, it's one of the aesthetically pleasing cards of all time. Just love it. Uh, love Mickey Mantle diving into the stands there. And, uh, you know, he's got a big smile on his face, probably from uh, winning the MVP in uh, 1955. But just such an awesome card. So that's at um, number uh, was it 18. Uh, at number 17, uh, I have the 2011 Tops Update Mike Trout. Um, this is one of those cards a couple years ago I probably wouldn't have voted for. But it's, you know, over the years, Trout has kind of proven that he is the best player in the game right now. And uh, from 2011 on, uh, this is definitely the card to go for. I used to have the base version of this card, but I... Uh, Gave it away as part of one of my epic giveaways, but I do still have this beautiful diamond anniversary in a PSA 10. Um, at number 16 is uh, the Derek Jeter, uh, the 93 Jeter uh, SP. Uh, one of my biggest regrets was not picking up this card in a higher grade, but uh, just a beautiful card. And what sort of made it one of the greatest cards is the the uh, the the condition uh, of this card is so hard to get in a PSA ten even PSA nines now go for four or five thousand dollars it's it, maybe even more than that uh, by now but it's just been insane so uh, that at number sixteen uh, at number fifteen I have the Roberto Clemente the fifty five tops Roberto Clemente. And again, you can see I'm a big fan of the 55 and 56 Tops cards, and uh, this is just one of my favorite cards. Um, at number 14, uh, again, another nomination for this year's U2 Baseball Card Hall of Fame, the 33 Gaudi Lou Gehrig. I have it in a uh, SGC4. At number 13, uh, this Ty Cobb, the T206 Ty Cobb with the red background. I could see a lot of people voting for Eddie Plank, but I really just love this uh, this Ty Cobb um, in particular. And uh, there you have it, the 1911 Piedmont Cigarettes. At number 12, and uh, again, <laughs> I maybe I'm voting for this because I am a huge Don Mattingly fan, but... Um, I, you know, I don't think I'm that off base. You know, this is one of the biggest cards from the 1980s, which was the uh, the biggest era for baseball cards. The 1984 Don Russ, Don Mattingly, and um, see that this card is going for over a thousand dollars now in a PSA 10. And um, at number 11, and my final nominee for this year is going to be the Sandy Koufax rookie, the 1955 top Sandy Koufax rookie. And I'm sure that this almost got in last year, so I'm going to put this um, in as one of my votes for this year. So there you have it, guys. Those are my top 20 cards of all time. Uh, let me know what you think. And um, if you guys want to, uh, definitely check out um, Ray from Philly's channel. Um, I'm sure he'll be doing um, the, the results of all the nominees uh, for number 20 through number 11. Thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll talk to you later. Peace.